TV eggs. Oh, yeah, there are. The cats can't get them in there. What are y'all looking at? Eggs. There are eggs in this bag with a nest. And I can't bird. To see them hatch. What kind of bird egg do you think it I is? I think it's a Carolina wren. <laughs> it won't focus, but you can see the eggs right there. I don't know why a bird would build her nest right here. Riggs is right there. The cats can climb up there. It gives me so much anxiety when the babies are in danger. I also planted these little planters last night. Eventually I want them to go down here, I think, but I've still got to trim and rake out all the stuff. The chickens have flung all of these leaves out of the flower beds. <laughs> um, but I think they're going to look pretty. I had to get shaded plants because we really don't get a lot of sun on the front porch. So that's why I have the impatience and the hanging baskets. Oh, and then I tried to get a variety of things um, that would do well in partial shade. What do you got in your bag, Eli? Two. Lost I lost two? it. I lost it. This Wait, smile again. Look at that. And before I lost tooth. One tooth. Yeah. A front tooth. <laughs> Play a song for us. That is beautiful. <laughs> I've been practicing. Can we talk about these pretty bird pictures I got at the thrift store this weekend? They're still, like, they're too low. I've got to, like, rehang them, but look how pretty. I love them. I wanted to show y'all the fig tree is coming alive. We have two massive fig trees. I don't even know if I can do justice to how big they are in comparison to the fig trees. And I'm 5'8". Like, this is how big they are. But look in there, you can see little figs starting to form. And here's the second fig tree. It kind of gets overshadowed by this artificial cherry tree. So honestly, this one may have to go to make more sunshine for the fig trees because I care more about trees that produce food for me and my family than about ornamental things. I mean, y'all know I love pretty things, but I like to eat more. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a six month update on the spot on GPS collar we've been using for rigs. So a lot of you who've been here since we moved into this house know that we were struggling to figure out fencing options moving from half an acre to 14 acres. We live near a road and we didn't want rigs to get hit by a car. He also would bark at dogs that were walking across the street. He wasn't used to not being fenced in. He wouldn't just like stay on the porch or anything like that. So we knew we had to fence in the property, but with lumber pricing and the amount of acreage we would have to fence, it was gonna cost a ton of money, even if we just did the most basic fencing. So I was kind of researching options and Chris had come across spot on and they use GPS to create an invisible fence. Kind of like, like our dog growing up when we lived in a neighborhood, they came in and buried an electric fence that would tie into your dog's collar and that's how you would keep your dog in without having to build a fence. Well now they can use GPS cellular towers to create a fence that will beep at your dog, vibrate, and you can also use the static correction too, which we use for Riggs because y'all know he is an escape artist. I have been trying to keep that dog in fencing since he's been a puppy. At our old house, he was always escaping. I was always having to patch the fence. So I knew that we would have to have the strongest options available to teach him to stay within that barrier. And I'm happy to say it has worked so amazingly not only did it save us money because it was like a six or a seventh of the cost of the fencing it would have been it has worked perfectly the only time Riggs has ever crossed the barrier was when we didn't realize the collar was not charged and we had gone next door to see our neighbor and suddenly Riggs was there and I was like why why are you over here we kept walking him across and he wasn't reacting or his collar wasn't beeping and I checked my app and it showed me that the, the collar was dead. So that was a user error, not an issue with the collar. But it has worked so well. 
He has not escaped. He's even gotten to the point where he doesn't even go near the areas he just knows he doesn't go into our front yard it feels so good to know that Riggs is safe the app is also super handy because you can track his location in real time so there have been times where we couldn't find Riggs so I can track him in real time figure out where he is it also notifies us if he has crossed the barrier it notifies us when the uh, battery is about to die so spot on uses GPS and cellular data to help the caller work. That's what makes it work. The GPS can be used anywhere, even when you have no cell service in remote places. So if you live somewhere really rural, the GPS will work great there. The cellular data is more for tracking purposes and it gives you the escape alert. So if your dog crosses the boundary, you will get that alert through cellular data. And right now our routine has been putting rigs up at night and charging the collar but they have been improving the battery life of their callers to be 22 hours, which is great, so that you could keep your dog out overnight with the collars on and just have a small charging window. I think it's great that the collar battery lasts so much longer now. Um, it makes your options of keeping your dog out or in at night a lot more open to whatever works best for your family. But one of the features I want to talk about that's super exciting, they just launched their keep out zones, which I think is going to be an awesome feature, especially for more rural places and homesteads because the keep out zones are barriers you can create within your barrier. So we have our whole 14 acres fenced out for rigs with the collar. So he can roam our 14 acres completely. With the keep out zones, we could create a barrier around our garden within the barrier of our property. So Riggs is safe on our 14 acres, but now we could create a space that says you're not allowed in the garden. You could also put it around your chicken coop or around animals that you don't want your dog near, around hazardous areas. I think that is such a smart feature. It's going to be huge in helping people with homesteads create different spaces that will keep their dogs out of the areas they're not supposed to be in. I don't know about you, but I have had dog poop in my garden before and it is not a pleasant experience. We're currently setting up our above ground pool and Riggs he's out of the puppy stage but he still likes to chew things so I'm thinking we may do a keep out zone around the kids pool area so he doesn't chew up pump parts or rafts or try to get up into the pool because he wants to do anything the kids are doing so that would be the perfect use for the keep out zone. The next new feature that Spot On has come out with is called home zones. So home zones are areas inside the barrier that corrections are turned off. So your home would be an example. If your dogs are indoors, you could set that as a home zone so that your dog can come in and out without corrections. The collar is disabled when they're in that area so that they can come inside, they can go outside to use the bathroom and still have that barrier outside to keep them safe, but also be able to come in and out freely. So I think that's a really cool feature as well. They've also upped their satisfaction guarantee to 90 days. So you can try the collar for 90 days and see if it's a good fit for you and your dog, which I love because I know that it's an investment. And anytime I put money towards something, I want to know that I have the option if it doesn't work out to get a refund, if it's not a good fit for me. They've also lowered their price. And because of that, now my coupon code, instead of saving $150, it saves $100. But Carolina Farmhouse is my coupon code if you decide to try it. That will save an extra $100 on their already discounted pricing. So, I think that's really exciting. And I know whenever I see product reviews, I want to know how it's panning out in the long run and not just what's your initial reaction and I can honestly say we absolutely love spot on we will continue to use it it's the perfect fit it's so handy and it works well and it's adaptable to different circumstances and I think that this could be a huge benefit to homesteaders and farmers and just people living out in the country that you can fence your property and keep your dog safe for a much more affordable price, especially with fencing prices the way they are right now. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments. I will answer honestly because, you know, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not going to sit here and tell you lies about a product just because they want me to promote it. I'm going to be honest and I'm being real when I say that this caller answered so many of our prayers when it came to trying to save money on fencing, keeping rigs safe, 
and letting him have free range of this property. He was on half an acre and he was so high energy and we wanted him to have the space to run and have the space to play and explore and burn some of that crazy energy and spot on callers have helped us do that in a way that didn't break our budget. Otherwise, I don't know what we would have done. Highly recommend six months into this, the collar is holding up well, Riggs has not escaped at all and we are very, very happy with our product. So if you want to see how to install the fence and how easy it is, that's on my last video and I'll link it below. I'll show you a couple things now that we do with the collar. I'll show you where we charge it and how we charge it as well as the correct way to put it on. But a lot of the how-to information is in my last video. I like to see things done, so kind of seeing how we set it up can be helpful in helping you understand how to do it yourselves with your collar. But it's super easy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. All right, so the collar has held up really well. And so this is how you put it on the dog. <laughs> you just wanna make sure the GPS square at the top right here is pointing upwards so that it gets the best signal. And then you clip it around. And then here is where the prongs are that can provide the beeping and vibration and the static correction. So that goes down here and you just make sure that little square is at the top and that way it can get a good signal and you're good to go. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we're in my kitchen now, and then we just have the charger. This is what it looks like. You can see the little hooks for the prongs of the collar. That's how it charges. So then in the mornings when we let Riggs out, we just come and get the collar off the charger and go put it on him. Okay, I hope this was helpful if you're considering a spot-on GPS collar to have like the follow-up for it. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to answer them, and I hope that this review was helpful.